are the creators and founders of Two Moms Samehood. We are neighborhood besties on a mission to create a community with open arms to welcome all women in this walk of life with motherhood, mental health, fashion, decor, homeschooling, and much more. Definitely much more. So please be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It would mean so much to us. So today's video is a very exciting one because we are collaborating with Megan Hurst. You can find Megan over on her Instagram. Her handle is Megan underscore Hurst underscore. So we know that you guys will absolutely love her content. She makes videos on motherhood, health, fitness, lifestyle. She's a Christian mama like Jen and I, and we just know that you guys will really enjoy her content. Yeah, we're excited. And today we're going to talk about something that um, probably most of you can relate to, and that is how to be more productive. And we actually have a really good list that we put together. Um, everything we put together, we try to be relatable to you. Mm -hmm. And so it comes from our own um, lifestyle, I should say, and just things that we've really implemented in our daily life that help us be productive. So Megan is going to be sharing five tips for productivity and we will also be sharing five tips for productivity. We really think that you guys will find these tips helpful because we're moms just like you are and even if you're not a mom, I'm sure we could all use a little more productivity in our lives right now. Uh, that be? Oh yeah, productivity. <laughs> When you're productive, you instantly feel successful, and when you feel successful, what does it do? It helps your self-esteem. Definitely. It makes you feel better. When I'm not productive, my days are not good. What about you? It's It could be rough. It's yeah. rough for me. If I feel like I haven't accomplished anything for the day, and when I mean anything, I mean like my to-do list, I get grumpy. Yeah, I can relate to that. I'm sure you can relate to that too. And we're going to talk about why we feel like that. So we'll go ahead and start off with our first productivity helpful hint is time blocking. Yes, time blocking, which is something that I could use some improvement on. And actually, Jen has been really good at teaching me this. So I am your classic scatterbrain. That is me. Nice to meet you. <laughs> what mom isn't? Yeah, so here's how I clean my house. I walk to the kitchen to put the plate in the sink. On my way to the kitchen, I notice that there's a sock on the floor. That's squirrel. So then I pick up the sock and I turn around and go to the washing machine. And, and then I forget what I even started off to do, which was to go to the kitchen to clean the dishes. <laughs> you gotta stay in your lane when you time block. So time blocking for me is critical because I get so dang scatterbrained. And right now as mompreneurs, I mean, I guess you could call us that, we have several different businesses that we are trying to do in addition to raising kids. And you guys, if you don't know, I have three girls and Jen has, how many kids? Tell them. I have five kids. We've got with, eight kids with between eight us. eight kids between us. And they're, you know, they're all each their own individual. Mm -hmm. And we have, we range from 15 years old down to one year old twins. Yep. And each one has their own needs, and I don't need to elaborate on that. I think a better word for scatterbrain would be distracted. Yes, so where I'm going with all of that is that time blocking helps me focus on one task for a specific set of time. So I tend to use my timer on my microwave when I time block. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, so <laughs> what, what I'll often do is I'll give myself a 20 minute timer and that's 20 minutes that I am dedicating to just picking up your typical daily, like wipe down the counters real quick, mm -hmm. pick up. Then I often will time block a separate time to work on work stuff. I cannot, what happens when I try to do both at the same time is I'm not giving the best version of me to either one of those tasks. I'm just giving my a piece of myself to my work and a piece of myself to my housework and it's not getting done with the efficiency that I want it to be. It's so true and what I'm writing down is this sample to show you guys and I'm sure this could seem so simple, but you guys, sometimes the most simple things that we apply to our daily life makes a huge difference in the productivity and the outcome of our day. Yeah. 
So with that said, and if you don't have a kitchen timer, <laughs> that's true. You get a piece of paper, you write down kitchen, bathroom, laundry. Okay, this is just an example. You get your timer on your phone, okay? And you set that bad boy. And when that timer goes off, if you are not done completely yet, stop. Go to the next one. And then what you can do is you can regroup for your next day and you can go to the list of what didn't get finished. And then you, oh, can, like you can change your time frame or your time blocks. Because the thing with time blocks is it's going to change mm -hmm. because life change. Life That's changes. True. And you're going to have different things arise in your daily life. So that's a and good thing to remember. This is the biggest distraction of them all. Yes, put your phone, if you're not using it for the timer, put your phone away, away. like out of, out of sight, out of mind. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't even play music on my phone anymore because I'll hear if I get a text message or a notification yes. and I'll stop what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I'll go to my phone. So yep. put the phone away. Yeah. Choose one thing to, one task. Mm -hmm. Pick an amount of time that you want to dedicate to that task mm -hmm. and block out your time for that. Yeah, and I just want to um, piggyback off of this. You know, I think that we've been um, uh, trained <laughs> or told that multitasking is the best. And you guys, actually multitasking is not healthy, um, so to speak, because when you're multitasking and you're not getting one of those tasks finished, you're not productive. And then you you're feel spinning like spinning your wheels. You're spinning your wheels. It's a hamster wheel. You're spinning your wheels and you're not getting anything done. So I know that we like to joke like, oh, I'm multitasking, which you know, if we get if we dig deeper that we're really not, we're just creating more work and then that mental load and that capacity just becomes overwhelming and we don't get anything done and then we're exhausted. Mm-hmm. And what's our number two? So our second tip for productivity is using a planner. And the reason why we chose this as the second tip is because it basically goes hand in hand with time blocking. Mm -hmm. So if you like hard copy planners, like physical in your hands, pen to paper, highly recommend this one that I picked up from Target. Better than your phone. Yeah, this is. Because then you'll get distracted. That's true. Yes. This is Rachel Hollis's priority planner. You can get it at Target. We'll make sure to link it down below in the description box. Super cute. But the reason I like this planner so much is because it has each hour or each part of the day is blocked off by time. Time blocking. It's basically a time blocking planner. So get yourself a planner if you're someone that likes to plan out your days ahead of time. I do use my phone for important appointments and dates in my calendar, right. but my time blocking gets done in this right here. Right. And there's something about having the organic touch of the pen to the paper mm -hmm. when you write, because we lose touch of that. Number three. Ooh. To-do list. To-do list. Yeah. Again, that kind of, yeah. do you see how it's like there's a, a pattern? Holding, yeah, where they all kind of feed into the next one. So. Time blocking, planner, to-do list, they all kind of go hand in hand. Again, I'm with Jen, I write my to-do list on a piece of paper all the time, probably every day, my chicken scratch to-do list. There is nothing better than checking off something There's on your really to There's really not. Yeah, and then once again, that leads you to being more productive. Mm -hmm. And so to-do list can be you know, you don't have to get so detailed that you, it's just stressful to make a to-do list. Right. Just jot down your goals. When you go to bed, before you go to bed, you take your vitamins or whatever, um, have get it, get into a habit of after you brush your teeth to go to bed, you go to your, your notepad and you just make a list of what you would like to accomplish. And it's really important that you make goals that are attainable. Mm -hmm. So... Don't get too crazy and, and um, overconfident and make a, you know, a list of 20 things that you want to get done. You need to make sure that you're making it appropriate and attainable to your lifestyle and where you're at because you're going to change seasons of life and sometimes you're going to be able to get five things done. Sometimes you're going to be able to get one of those things done. That's true. Yeah. And that's kind of another reason why I love this planner so much is because there's actually a spot in there that um, gives you the option to write down your top priorities each week. So you break down your week and your time better. So 
And that journal has really great verbiage too. It does. It kind of gives you hints on what to do mm -hmm. and tells you basically how to make a planner or a to-do list, I should say. Yeah, so. definitely. Okay, so our next tip for productivity is meal prepping or meal planning. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are like, okay, you lost me at that. I hate meal prepping and planning. Right. <laughs> It doesn't have to be crazy like where you are making, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the whole entire week. It can be as simple as what Lindsay does is she has a whiteboard, a chalkboard, mm -hmm. and she writes down what dinner is going to be each day of the week. So not only does she know and what to be prepared for, but also your family knows. So there's yes. no, what are we having for dinner? And then it's a surprise and they don't want it. No, this is what we're having for dinner. Exactly. That's what you're going to eat and you're going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the whole point of why I have a chalkboard in the entrance to my kitchen is because I got so tired of what are we having for dinner from my kids, from my husband? Yeah. My response is just look on the whiteboard. Yep. But in all honesty, if I don't plan out my dinner for the day, I'm so thrown off. I just, mm -hmm. it's become a habit for me. And meal planning, prepping, whatever you want to call it, you know, it just will help your day flow smoothly. If you don't have the time to meal prep or plan or you're working full time, there are amazing services out there that you can do to kind of fill in the gaps. For example, we've partnered up with Yumble Kids. Love Yumble. Yes, Love which it. is a meal prepping service for kids. And all of the meals are organic and they're 100% cooked, ready to eat. You just have to heat just them up. up. Yeah, so little hacks like that, having those ready made meals in my fridge helps me so much it will it's a tiebreaker to feeling like you had a good day mm -hmm. because I think we can all agree that towards the end of the day when dinner time approaches where our gas tanks getting a little low definitely and <laughs> you know mentally and physically and so when you're prepared and you have those things done yeah. it makes a huge difference there's you know and also that kind of also loops back around to time blocking you mm -hmm. can time block your day you know, with we eat breakfast and do our morning chores between eight and nine. We eat dinner, we start getting ready for dinner and put our toys away between five and six. Dinner's at 6.30. And I'm more of a free spirit, if you will, but I will tell you that even if you are, you can have time blocking being your life and, and that way you're not setting yourself up for an automatic failure that if you do just, oh no, at six o'clock we eat. Mm -hmm. When you have that time block, it not only gives you a little bit of room to have for any hiccups that have happen, but then you're not feeling like you're running behind. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Yeah. It, it just helps give a guideline to your day. It doesn't have to be like the end all be all, but let it be like your map to your day. Absolutely. And I think with dinner everyone's hangry by the end of the day and that's when kids are grumpy and stuff starts going south real quick so. real quick they got the wind up for the wind down coming yeah. up and yeah we all know how that goes all right so our next tip is take breaks and have the self-awareness and the mindset to be able to recognize when you need a break this just might be our like golden if you're gonna take away anything from these five tips this right here is the tip that we want you to pay attention to 100 percent. and i'm gonna give you some i'm gonna read some things to you and this is this is why okay we were just talking before this video and we talk about mindset often mm -hmm. on our instagram over at two moms underscore same hood and then, you know, we also have talked about it on previous videos that we've done. And we want to dig a little deeper because it's the mindset is basically the engine to everything in your life. So, and I'm going to tell you why. So we know that what you think about comes about. We've all heard that, right? What you think about, you are kind of like what you eat, you are. And you know what? It's true, you guys. It's 100% the truth. 
So what you think about occupies real space. There is a book that we wanted to tell you about and that we're actually excited. It's on Audible, yes. on your apps, on your phone. So moms, this is also a great thing that we add into our life. We both do it is we listen to podcasts um, and Audible, which is books on your phone because sometimes we don't have time to sit there and read the you know chapters or or dive into that area of life. So while you're doing dishes or you're getting ready in the morning or even when you're taking a shower, you can listen and feed um, feed yourself with healthy mindset knowledge. Um, and so this is what we I learned about actually just this morning. Oh, and before we get into that, the book, by the way, is called Switch on Your Brain by Dr. Carolyn Leaf. And I'll make sure to link that in the description. Yeah, box. we're so excited. So a lot of these things Lindsay and I already um, know about, but we wanted to share with you. And that is science proves that our thoughts are actual real biochemical things that actually occupy real space in your brain. That's so okay. interesting. Yes. Let that resonate for like one second. Okay. <laughs> Cause it's, it's like got a lot of space. It's a lot of space in, in your brain. brain to ping pong, to, to try to digest what that means. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know already, I'm a huge, I think we're both, we are like nerds to knowledge. Like mm -hmm. we, meaning we're forever learners. We're both reading. We're, we're just all about what, what's up and coming. And yeah. science is one of my favorites. You guys, biochemical real things actually take up real space in your brain. And we only have so much room in our brain, right? So if you have a small head like me, you might have even <laughs> less room in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> She's the tiniest head in the world. And well, we should do a video on that. Seriously, you guys, I had no clue. Okay. Um, so you want to choose wisely what goes into that space, meaning what you give into, for example, if you're giving into negativity, malice, hatred um, and you know what if you were to sit back and actually self-reflect you might not even be aware that you are thinking of those things a lot That's true because what happens is with those biochemical things that you actually are are creating grooves in your brain and if it's traumatic and you know your thoughts can be traumatic if they're too negative you're creating grooves in your brain and you're stuck in those thoughts you know you've ever heard or you know even felt yourself like I can't stop thinking about it or I can't get over it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to stop and pray and you need to start telling yourself positive things. You need to so mindset is the key to happiness and health. Pretty much I could stop there because yeah. I could go on this could be a whole soapbox by itself. If you guys want us to make a video on mindset and the power behind it and mm -hmm. the science and what we do on a daily Even basis. Even the spiritual aspect. There's absolutely. tons of um, scripture that supports this. Mm -hmm. So it's just mind boggling to me. Yeah, let us know in the comments below if that's a video that you might be interested in. But mindset is everything. So going back mm -hmm. to our tip, take breaks and what that means is if you are hitting a wall or if things are not going right and you're feeling yourself get frustrated you're overwhelmed you're stressed you need to have a self-awareness and be in the right mindset to know okay i need to stop quit giving energy to this task right now and I need to take a break because you're not productive when you are, like Jen said earlier, sp spinning your wheels. You just need to stop that task. And that kind of goes back to um, what Jen said about the time blocking. If you don't finish a task, just stop. And that also can be if things are not going your way or you're having a rough morning and just too many things are not lined up for you, release it let it go you can circle back to that thing later and it's hard to do it takes practice but it does it on a from a productivity point of view you're not productive when you're in that bad or heavy minds uh mindset right no you're not you're not you literally turn into a hamster spinning the wheel mm -hmm. and i raised my hand earlier because i've had a pretty deep heavy week with some personal things going on and i will tell you um, the last two days, which I'm normally, you know, I'm on top of my time blocking and the productivity, I had to literally sit back and take a breather mm -hmm. 
because I felt myself mentally, like I just was all over the place. It was hard for me to get a load of laundry folded. Then what happens, you feel grumpy and then that energy just deflects onto everybody else. So um, it's not gonna happen overnight to form these new habits, but the more you do it, the better you feel and the better you feel what? You keep doing that, right? It just goes along the line of eating healthy and exercise, which is our last topic of being productive. Yeah, and I think exercise, you know, can cover a lot of different areas. Exercise can be for your mental health, for your physical health, for just like your spiritual well-being, all of those things. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to taking a break, exercise can actually be your form of a break. Yes. So that's actually a really good way to just stop everything that you're doing and use that as your break to clear your headspace, to clear your mind and reset. We all need that reset button all the time. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's one thing to want to, you know, keep going and feel productive and be strong and feel proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. I totally get that, especially as a mama or even just a working woman. But if we're not, um, if we don't hit that reset button, you are exhausted and you're not being as productive as you want to be. Yeah. And, and just to kind of wrap it up, us as moms, when we don't feel great about our bodies, it kind of spills over into all different areas in our life. And I can just speak to that because I am at the highest weight I've been in a long time. And it just, I'm not happy with myself and it kind of spills over into other areas. So exercise is a great way to release, you know, release stress and help your mindset, I think. Absolutely. And it, you know, when you have a healthy mindset, you tend to have, bring on better traits to yourself as far as having grace with yourself, mm -hmm. loving yourself better. And that kind of also loops back to having better and healthier self talks. So. so we hope that you guys enjoyed these five tips on productivity. Please make sure to check out Megan's channel and her five tips as well. Make sure that you tell her Jen and Lynn's from Two Moms Same Hood sent you. Show her some love. We hope that you guys are staying safe and that you have a beautiful week. We know that there's a lot of just really heavy stuff happening in the world right now there is and with that we just really want you to know that we are praying mamas and we pray every day if there's any specific prayers you need you don't even have to you know put in detail what it is but if you would like prayer go ahead and leave that in the comments below we will pray for you absolutely and um with that just try to stay positive and be a light that is very true bye guys thank you so much for bye watching.